A ball is projected with a purely horizontal velocity from a 7.60 meter tall cliff and lands 11.3 meters from the base of the cliff. So let's draw a picture of this. Okay, so it's 7.6 meters tall, right? And then it lands out here. <laughs> this pen is being glitchy. It lands out here. Uh, uh, 11.3 meters from the edge, okay? Follows this trajectory. If you could imagine, that's a nice smooth parabola, right? Okay. So what I want you to do is fill in what you know. You know, uh, in all projectile motion problems, you know this and this. In all purely horizontally projected ones, you know this, right? And then in this problem, I'm telling you this and this. So let's see if you can fill it in. I'm going to pause here for a second. Still pausing. All right, here we go. So this guy's 0 and negative 9.8. This is 0 if it's purely horizontal, right? And then I feel like this guy's 11.3, and this guy is negative 7.6. It's negative because it's down, right? Okay. And then in the vertical, by the way, we can't do anything in this direction because it really is just three things. There's this. These guys are just one thing, and then there's this guy. We only have one thing. Really, this doesn't help us. So uh, let's do the vertical direction. The answer must lie here, right? Uh, I'm going to find the final velocity using no, no t. So that equals vi squared plus 2ax, right? So the final velocity is equal to the square root of, and then the initial velocity is 0, so it's it's not there, right? And then it's just this guy, right? So 2 times negative 9.8 times uh, negative 7.6. All right, we could do this. Square root of 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 7.6. Negative 7.6. And it's 12.205, roughly. But remember, we took the square root of the square. That's the absolute value of it. For sure, it's negative 12.205 meters per second, OK? Uh, and then let's find the time. Uh, I find the time. I like this guy, vit. There's different ways to do this, though, if, you're, if you have a way that works. I'm going to do that, right? So uh, negative 7.6. Remember, the initial velocity is 0, so that goes away. So that equals 1 half times negative 9.8 times t squared. So let's just, let's just solve this, OK? So literally, just follow along with me. Right? Type in negative 7.6. You got it? You typed in negative 7. Now go times 2 to get rid of this. Divide by negative 9.8. So you go times 2 divided by negative 9.8. And now I've got that 1.551 is t squared, right? So then the question is, what's t? So it goes second square root, second answer. And the time is 1.2454. 2.454. It's so hard. There we go. That's 1.2454. That's our time. Seconds, right? Okay, um, and we can plug that in here. So 1.2454 seconds. And then, of course, that's also the time here, 1.2454. And now on the horizontal side, we can fill in what we know, right? So horizontal. Uh, let's see. Oh, the only thing we ever do is just x is v over t. In this case, we're actually solving for, whoops, that's just wrong. The only thing we ever do is v is x over t. Right? And we're solving for v, so that's very convenient, right? So it's 11.3 divided by 1.2454. All right, 11.3 divided by, I'm just going to go answer. I'm getting 9.073. All right, so that's going to be this guy. Okay, and that's meters per second. So let's answer the... Let's answer the questions that it asks. So let's see. It says, what time is the ball in the air? 
while the time is going to be 1.25 seconds. And that just comes from here, right? Uh, what purely horizontal velocity was it projected from the top of the cliff? B, that's going to be this guy, right? And I'm going to say 9.07. Okay. Do we get that right? Ooh, we got that right. Uh, C says, what is the final vertical velocity just before it hits the ground? Not after. Come on. What do you think I am? Okay, I'm just going to use this guy here, right? That's going to be that. So that's negative 12.2 meters per second. Ta-da. All right. <laughs> now I feel like I've got to box them all in, but I'm not going to. All right. And then the final thing says, draw a picture of the velocity vector. Uh, calculate the speed it's traveling, the angle below. All right. So are we ready for this? I'm going to erase in three, two, one. Aha. Psych. All right. So um, remember that we've got a horizontal velocity that is 9.07339 meters per second. Then we have a vertical velocity that is, let's find it, where is it? There it is, negative 12.205 roughly meters per second. So draw them like this, step one, draw the x component from the tip of the x, draw the y, and then the, the vector does this, right? Make sure that all of these are vectors, that this guy, you can't draw just a triangle, right? And then we need to find an angle, so let's find that angle. Okay, that angle is tan minus one of 12.205 divided by 9.07339. These are just numbers that I used, right? So I'm gonna go second tan of that 12 number divided by the 9.073 number, 53.4 degrees. So that is 53.4 degrees. And then to find the speed, we're going to have to find the length of this hypotenuse because that's our speed. So that's going to be 9.07339 squared plus 12.205 squared. Don't put the minus signs in here or here or bad things will happen. Your calculator will explode. Maybe not. All right. This guy squared plus this guy squared. I'm getting 15.2 meters per second. Hard to write at a diagonal like this. Again, that's our speed. Remember, the speed is the magnitude of the velocity vector. Okay, so Here's how I'm going to give you all the points for this. First, your drawing is correct. You use an arrow to, for your x component and an arrow for your y component. Okay? You put them tip to tail like that. Then you drew the vector as an arrow starting from the tail of the first to the tip of the last. Right? You've labeled an angle. You've properly calculated that angle. And you've labeled the hypotenuse with what the um, magnitude is. Right? All the points. Every time. 